I'm delighted to turn over the virtual podium for our first case study of UMass Memorial Healthcare. Um, and my colleague, Rick Segrist, is going to be leading us through with his colleagues, Doug Brown from UMass Memorial Community Hospitals, uh, president there and CAO for UMass Memorial Healthcare, and Monica Lowell, Vice President of Community Relations at UMass Memorial Healthcare. When we talked about the the what, there, we, there was a lot of discussion around language, around an anchor institution and an anchor mission as being place-based. Community came up as a very significant theme. We talked a little bit about the pillars that were mentioned in the case of the, the hiring and buying and investing local. We talked about who and what is an institution pursuing an anchor mission, of course, healthcare, which is, is the focus here, and how pursuing an anchor mission is a long, something that is long term. We talked about it as being a departure from a traditional mission and the importance of, of the culture of an anchor institution that supports an anchor mission and bringing in different parties that think outside the box and are willing to partner uh, within the organization. We talked about investment of assets and reorientation of assets to pursue this anchor mission strategy. We talked about why a healthcare, what health system might adopt an anchor mission. I really loved when one of the members of our room talked about why not. Really seeing an anchor mission as a challenge to the status quo. So we initially focused on the process and David gave an overview of Worcester and the challenges faced by Worcester with the loss of manufacturing and the fact that a new CEO came in to an institution that had its challenges and basically implemented a process including, you know, a reassessment, selling off real estate holdings uh, to turn the organization around and basically took up this challenge of developing an anchor institution here in Anchor Mission. Uh, how do you move from feeling good to implementing? And I think a, a good point was to have somebody that is in charge to really keep the momentum going and that too, its implementation in itself can keep the feel good momentum as well. To include the community engagement in the process was really paramount. And I think we had really good insights from the ALI fellows and that it's really important to do a deep dive into the data to get a status quo of the, the economics of the, of the community that UMass serves and to show that you know the, the financials of UMass are directly tied to the economic status of the Worcester community. We quickly exhausted that question as I bet you uh, probably could have expected, but it brought us to some interesting new questions around the nuances. So uh, with my groups, um, permission, I'll, I'll try and represent the conversation that, that was uh, really interesting. So almost universally, the answer uh, for everyone was yes, yes, this is relevant um, to uh, to my organization. Um, and yet the idea um, that alone doesn't make this an easy, um, uh, an easy concept to imagine um, integrating into their organizations. Our, our non-healthcare perspective um, describes not an obvious connection to the UMass Memorial case, but then went on to describe some work that they had done in redevelopment. Um, specifically with uh, with educational anchor between those. Um, but our Healthcare Anchor Network friends encouraged us that actually there aren't as many differences uh, between um, anchor meds and anchor eds as, as uh, one might think. All anchors need to ask, who is that community that you're serving? How do you measure this stuff? And uh, it, it's a very difficult problem to tackle. In, in our group, we had a discussion about doing a deep dive into data and figuring out where exactly are you right now just this morning, we, we are releasing some data to the city on what we're seeing in terms of the ethnic and racial makeup of our COVID positive patients in our system. And it's very preliminary, but we are seeing that the Hispanic population is bearing a disproportionate burden of this disease in Worcester County. They're about 12% of the population. And I think when I looked at the data, it's more than double that in terms of their representation in the patients we're seeing. So Monica can take some of that information and when she goes out to the community, she can focus in particular in 
areas with um, with high Hispanic uh, population. The culture about Worcester coming together, always stepping up and working as a community. Um, immediately, a group was formed, Worcester Together, a large coalition that has different um, groups that are uh, working on this issue of behavioral health, access to care, elderly in isolation, education, um, transportation, housing needs. It is amazing how uh, this coalition has come together. There's a particular group, uh, volunteers, uh, that actually are needed trying to address those kind of needs, food insecurity, you name it. So you have what I call shared ownership. We cannot do this alone, but by having different segments of the community stepping in, we are trying to uh, address some of these issues.